I've seen a lot of noise recently about heart rate sensors, and it seems like there's a lot of misconceptions around heart rate sensors and watches and the perceived accuracy. Now, I'm no scientist over here. I did work in the fitness industry for over 15 years, so I'm familiar with that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, I'm just a dude that runs and lifts weights and reviews fitness gear and talks to my camera alone in my home office. I've been seeing more and more comments about the accuracy of Garmin's heart rate sensors in particular on social media, in my comment section, and well, I think some of that is stemming from a recent video from Rob, who goes by the Quantified Scientist on YouTube, where he reviewed the Phoenix 8. If you haven't seen his channel before, he is an actual scientist, and he specializes in biological informatics, and he tests various fitness gadgets, mainly against a Polar H10 heart rate strap. Now, he seems like a nice guy, and I'm sure he knows a lot more about data science than I do, and I'm not trying to bash him or his videos in any way, but I also think there are some things that people are missing when they watch a video like his recent Phoenix 8 review. So let's start with the fact that we're talking about an optical heart rate sensor. So what does that mean? Here's a super simple explanation. Basically, the heart rate sensor has LEDs, or light emitting diodes, that flash light into your skin, and the amount of light that's absorbed is measured. Algorithms convert that into heart rate data. Factors that can negatively impact reading accuracy are having a watch too loose, so you don't have good contact with your skin, and the sensor moves too much, so movement as well. Uh, your skin is too cold. You have low blood flow to that arm for whatever reason. Uh, it's very humid, or there's water where the readings are taking place. Or your forearm muscles are contracting a lot, which means things like lifting weights, uh, riding bikes, rowing, activities like that are often quite inaccurate. So of the available means to measure heart rate, an optical heart rate sensor on your wrist is pretty much the worst way to measure. It doesn't mean it's objectively bad, but it is the worst of the popular ways available to consumers. So a better way to measure heart rate is to use an optical heart rate sensor on another part of the body, such as the upper arm. The upper arm is a popular place and companies like Coros and Polar have optical sensors that are used there. The best way to measure heart rate is with an ECG-based heart rate monitor strapped around your torso. An ECG heart rate monitor works by measuring the actual electrical activity of your heart. This is considered the gold standard and monitors like the Polar H10 or Garmin HRM Pro Plus are among the top consumer level products that you can get. So if a wrist-based optical heart rate is the worst way to record heart rate, why is it the most popular? Well, I think there's two reasons for this. One, generally it's good enough. For day-to-day -day measurements to track wellness and health, it's just fine. And for sports activities, it can be, well, it can be worse, but again, for many, it's just fine. You can see that in some of my recent reviews, the overall average heart rate for a workout using a watch versus a heart rate strap is basically the same. But the second and most important reason is that it's just convenient and comfortable. People are used to wearing watches, so packing sensors into a wristwatch means you have a much larger target market than if you sold a standalone heart rate monitor that goes on your upper arm or around your torso. So let's get back to certain criticisms over heart rate accuracy. In most Phoenix 8 reviews, reviewers, including myself, stated the Phoenix 8 heart rate accuracy is top notch and generally performed very well. However, the quantified scientist found the Phoenix 8 heart rate accuracy to be below average and had quite a few issues during his testing. So how do we reconcile this? Are the other reviewers paid off by Garmin? Does a data scientist not know how to collect data? Now, not that I actually have to answer those questions, they're kind of redundant, but no, Garmin doesn't pay anyone to say things on videos, at least not that I'm aware of. And, and Rob seems to be extremely good at collecting and displaying data, so I don't think that's the issue either. So let's first take a look at the actual physical design of the Phoenix 8. Now this is a rugged outdoor type of a watch. It's not really a running watch. It's a do everything watch. It can handle anything you throw at it and you could also run with it. So that ruggedness means you've got a metal back, you've got a metal bezel, and it's basically, it's a heavy watch. Now I've worn an Epix for years and got quite used to the weight of the watch, but once you put on a polymer running watch, you realize you've been lugging around some serious grams on your wrist. So why does that matter? An optical heart rate sensor needs continuous contact with your skin and doesn't want to be shaken around from its contact point. So if your watch is heavier, it is more likely to move around on your wrist when running. It's just physics. And let's keep going with this. The strap and lug design of the Phoenix. The lug holds the pins and therefore the connection of the band. And that's all the way down on the bottom of the watch and the strap can kind of move freely when connected. So you've got a couple factors here. The height of the watch and the fact that there's a lot of weight in the bezel 
which is furthest from the wrist. So what does that get you? It gets you more movement. Look at watches that don't sit as tall on the wrist and I bet they'll stay put better during a run. In addition, I think, and maybe this is just in my mind, but I think that strap design that connects more onto the body of the watch, something like the TRX3 or the Pace Pro, and kind of keeps the band angled downward to curve around the wrist, promotes a better connection and less movement on the wrist. The Phoenix strap leaves a gap that creates an almost inescapable room for movement. So those are more general observations around having heavy, tall watches and a particular lug and strap design. But what about Rob, the quantified scientist in particular? Well, he has said in some recent reviews, he has kind of small wrists. Especially with my smaller wrist, the Enduro 3 does feel a bit oversized. And what size watch did he purchase to review? The 51 millimeter size, the largest, tallest, heaviest possible version of, of the Phoenix 8. There is little chance for the sensor to perform well here. So does that mean the Elevate 5 sensor is a poor sensor? No, I honestly don't think that's the takeaway here. If you throw a heavy 51 millimeter watch on a smaller wrist, there's too much room, get the pun there, for error. And I'm not a Garmin apologist. I personally sent my Phoenix 8 back to Garmin for reasons that had absolutely nothing to do with sensor accuracy. And right now I'm training for my upcoming marathon with a Coros Pace Pro on my wrist. So I'm just saying that underperforming in a few runs, using a watch that is almost definitely too large for you doesn't mean a sensor is bad when you consider the conditions of the test and the nature of the watch. So if my theory is right, then a Garmin watch with a lighter overall build would outperform a heavier one. So let's take a look at the screen capture from the Quantified Scientist Phoenix 8 review and you can see the 400 165 heavily outperforms the Phoenix 8. And you can also see other kind of less serious and also lighter and also less tall training watches from Garmin like the Vivo Active 5 and the Venue 3 outperform the flagship models like the Phoenix 7 Pro, Epix Pro, Phoenix 7. Now of note, you can also see that the Amazfit TRX3, which isn't that much lighter, but does have that different strap design I mentioned earlier, is really up near the top. And finally, it's also quite plain that Apple, Huawei, and now recently Google are putting out very high quality heart rate sensors. And while I admittedly have limited knowledge on Huawei offerings, I know that Apple and Google watches are not as tall or as heavy, which kind of lends to more favorable results here. So what can we take away from all this? The very nature of optical heart rate sensors on the wrist leads to less accurate readings. That's just what it is. You can see in my recent review of the Polar Vantage M3 that the ECG chest strap reacted most quickly to changes in my heart rate, then the optical sensor I had on my upper arm, and finally the optical sensor on my wrist. And regardless of how accurate the heart rate sensor in a watch is, that's pretty much the way it will always go when it's tested against other types of sensors. Even the most accurate sensor will lag behind when there's sudden changes in heart rate. Testing optical sensors and watches against each other is a more interesting comparison, but again, you need to keep in mind the actual physics of swinging around each model on your wrist. A heavy and rugged watch will very frequently underperform against a lighter watch that will stay put on your wrist. When all those variables are accounted for, then you're talking about the actual sensor accuracy. But then we're talking about performance in a vacuum, and if it's not performing right when you're recording activities, then you're left with an accurate wellness tracker, not a high-performing sports watch. So I do think that most modern watches from respectable brands will create very usable data that can track your training, measure your sleep, and inform your approach to health and wellness. But at the end of the day, and you'll hate hearing this, but at the end of the day, if you're lifting, running, or cycling, or rowing, or whatever, and you're seriously training based on your heart rate zones, you still should have an external heart rate strap of some type. For the most accurate and real-time data, that's what you're going to need to guide you during your training. Now, if you don't want to spend for an external heart rate sensor, then here's some things you can do to get the best accuracy you can from the sensor that's on your wrist. Number one. Choose the smallest appropriately sized watch if accuracy really matters to you. Now, if you're 6'6", 275, you don't need to get a 40 millimeter watch. But on the other hand, if you're 5'6", 145, don't put a 51 millimeter watch on your wrist. Number two would be keep your watch a bit higher. So you don't want to have it all the way up on your wrist. You want to kind of pull it down and let it cinch onto your forearm. The wrist is kind of like a flat, small, bony area. So let it kind of get up on the forearm muscle a bit and that'll kind of lock it in place better. Number three would be to use a nylon band. This will not only cut down on the weight, but will allow you to cinch your watch to the perfect tightness instead of only selecting from various holes of a normal silicon band. And if you do those, you'll maximize the accuracy that you can get out of the sensor on your watch.
So what are your thoughts on this? When you buy a heavy duty, rugged watch, are you okay with the sensor performing a few percent worse? Because if it ended up shattering with a flimsy build, it would perform a hundred percent worse. Or do you think that a watch that costs over a thousand dollars should outperform watches that come in at a fraction of the cost, weight, size, and ruggedness be damned? Oh, and if you want to see what my thoughts were on the Phoenix 8, then I'll have that pop up in a second here, so be sure and check that out. And yeah, I bet the comment section is going to be really fun on this one, so let the games begin. I'm Dave, and this is Dave Does Fitness. Have an awesome day, and stay fit.